and gentlemen, in today's video, I am going to be ranking every single WrestleMania in WWE history. Now, we are going to be doing this on a tier list, but I'm not going to be counting down from my least favorite to my most favorite or anything like that. We're just going to be putting them into five different tiers. Real quick, before we start the video, don't forget my plug. So use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or Prize Picks. You can save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products or match up to $100 of your first deposit. But that's all I got for plugs today. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, so here is the list we're working with today. And before we hop into explaining it and actually getting into it, I just want to tell you guys that while I've seen basically every single WrestleMania at some point, I didn't start watching wrestling until WrestleMania 22. That was my first one. Just to kind of give you guys that timeline. And to go through the tier list super quick, just to know what the order is. At the top, we're going to have the WrestleManias that I think are the cream of the crop, the best. Under that, we're going to have the very good WrestleManias. In the middle, we'll have the solid WrestleManias. Under after that, we'll have the lackluster WrestleManias, which I think just kind of stunk, but they were saved by a match or two. And at the bottom, we've got the WrestleManias that were flat out ass. Makes sense? All right, let's get going with WrestleMania 1. And if we're going to start this video off honest, I think WrestleMania 1 was ass. The main event was Hulk Hogan teaming with Mr. T, Andre the Giant faced Big John Studd in a body slam match. And also, I remember Junkyard Dog and Ricky Steamboat both being on this card, but I don't think they fought anybody memorable. I just, I think it was boring. Moving on, we got WrestleMania 2. Dude, this was a Solid WrestleMania, and I will stick to my guns on that. My dad owned this on VHS. He had Hulk Hogan fighting Bundy inside the cage. He had the big battle royal where Andre the Giant won. Uh, Jake the Snake fought somebody in there. I can't remember who. Randy Savage fought George Steele. It was filmed in three different locations, too. I actually thought that was a pretty fun WrestleMania to watch for the time. After that, we've got WrestleMania 3. A lot of people have this in the cream of the crop. I'll put it in very good. Headlined by Hogan and Andre. Ricky and uh, Macho stole the show. Um, Roddy fought Adrian. Adrian Adonis. That was pretty cool. It was a good WrestleMania. It's just a little dated. Now we got WrestleMania 4. Um, I'm going to say solid because I feel like at the time it was really cool, but there was too much. It was like 16 matches because it was just a huge tournament to crown the new champion at the end, which I think it was Macho beating uh, Ted DiBiase. Now we got WrestleMania 5. Uh, another solid one, I thought at least, going back and watching it. Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. Rick Rude versus Ultimate Warrior. Jake Roberts versus Andre. Brutus Beefcake versus Ted DiBiase. Like, it was, it was decent. WrestleMania 6. Lackluster to me. This was another really long one, and only the main event really sticks out to me, and that was Warrior versus Hogan. Sometimes it's a good thing WrestleMania split into two nights. Moving on, we got WrestleMania 7. Uh, lackluster. Again, the main event was Hogan and Slaughter. Undertaker debuted, which that'll be a video in its own. That WrestleMania match was terrible. And then you had Warrior and Macho Man in like a retirement match. But other than that, it was just a lot of nothing. Now we got WrestleMania 8. I actually thought it was solid. Undertaker and Jake the Snake for the time. Good match. Randy Savage and Flair. Hogan and Sid. Brett and Roddy Piper. That was a good little WrestleMania. Now we got WrestleMania 9. Trash can. Taker versus Giant Gonzalez in one of the worst matches I've ever seen. Yoko beat Brett and then Hogan beat him in like 20 seconds. Doink the Clown had a 10 minute match in there. It was a shit show. WrestleMania 10. Ugh, I want to put it in very good. Trust me, we'll start getting up here real soon when the WrestleManias start picking up. But this one again, I, I just got it in solid. It's carried by Sean and Razor, no doubt about it. You got Brett versus Owen, which was cool. And then Yokozuna fought twice in it, defending the title. And I think he lost the end to Brett. But really other than, than Sean and Razor, I, I don't go back there a whole lot. And now we got WrestleMania 11, uh, ass. It was seven matches, and Lawrence Taylor was in the main event. Diesel versus Sean was cool. Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy made me fall asleep almost. Like, I, that was horrible. And now we got WrestleMania 12, uh, very good. Sean versus Brett Iron Man match, Undertaker versus Diesel, which is elite. Warrior versus Triple H, Stone Cold fights somebody. It's a lot of star power, and at, the, at least the end, all the matches seem to be really good. WrestleMania 13, solid for sure. You got Brett and Stone Cold in the I Quit match. You got Undertaker and Psycho Sid main eventing it, which I actually think kind of stunk, but I'll get into that in a different video. You had Mankind and Vader teaming up against Owen Hart and someone. Triple H was in this one. I, I guess. I, I thought it was 
pretty solid. WrestleMania 14. I actually think this one was very good too. Stone Cold versus Shawn Michaels with Mike Tyson. Taker and Kane won. Triple H versus Owen Hart. The Legion of Doom was in it. I just thought it was from front to finish a well put together card. Now we got WrestleMania 15 and this is where my familiarity starts to really pick up with them and this one I'm not gonna lie I thought was really lackluster too. I think The Rock and Austin one saves it because if that match didn't exist it would be pretty terrible. But yeah you get Undertaker and Big Boss Man and Hell in a Cell. Aside from that it, I don't go back and watch it and I don't even go back and watch that match. Now we got WrestleMania 16 slash WrestleMania 2000. Ass. Sorry. The main event was a fatal four-way match that lasted 40 minutes and it was not the most entertaining 40 minutes if I remember correctly. And even though it did have Edge and Christian versus the Hardys and the Dudleys in a ladder match number one, it don't even come close to the following year. I, I do not ever go back and watch this WrestleMania. And that'll bring us to WrestleMania 17. We got the first Kareem of the Karat. Austin Rock 2, Taker Triple H 1, TLC 2. Kurt Angle beat Chris Benoit, Jericho beat Regal. There was an insane triple threat match for the Hardcore Championship. Championship. I think this is one of the most entertaining WrestleManias ever produced. Now moving on, we got WrestleMania 18. Uh, lackluster, overrated, borderline ass. I will fight anybody. They had 12 matches and six of them were under seven minutes. This WrestleMania is carried by The Rock versus Hogan. If that match was not on this card, nobody would ever talk about this WrestleMania. WrestleMania 19. Oh, I think this one was really good. Shawn and Jericho, Angle, Lesnar, McMahon and Hogan. Rock, Austin 3, which is super underrated. I, that was a fantastic WrestleMania. WrestleMania 20. Solid. Obviously, the main event that nobody can talk about anymore was great. I think Jericho and Christian was really underrated. Undertaker and Kane was okay. Eddie and Kurt was pretty good. I think this WrestleMania would have been a lot better if Brock versus Goldberg didn't suck so much. WrestleMania 21. Oh, I used to rent this every weekend. Oh, I think it goes in cream of the crop. I do. I, that was a fantastic WrestleMania. First ever money in the bank. Ray and Eddie, Cena, JBL, Batista, Triple H, Orton, Undertaker. I mean, it was like a whole new generation of stars emerging who we still see today. Well, some of them. Obviously, they're all old now. They're the veterans, but like, Going back and watching this WrestleMania, it's, it's a blast every single time. And now we got WrestleMania 22. Cream of the crop for nostalgic reasons. This is always going to be my home run WrestleMania. This is always going to be my go-to. And I genuinely do believe it is extremely entertaining too. You had the triple threat match where Rey Mysterio won the world title. Cena, Triple H. Taker, Mark Henry, Money in the Bank. Shawn Michaels versus Mr. McMahon. Edge and Mick Foley in the hardcore match. And this was a solid pay-per-view. Just too bad it was in a small arena. WWE went through a weird phase where I think they kind of dropped down in popularity. So 20, 21, and 22 were all in like Monday Night Raw size like basketball arenas. And then we go on to WrestleMania 23, which <laughs> this is a lot of people's WrestleMania 22. I get that. It's nostalgic for him. But if you're asking me, I think it's one of the most overrated WrestleManias out there. And I think it's also lackluster. Taker and Batista, cool. Cena and Sean, cool. Money in the Bank, that was pretty entertaining. The rest of the card, <laughs> a hair versus hair match, especially looking back on it now is just stupid. Now we got WrestleMania 24, which I respect, but it had a lot of stupid matches in it too, which holds it back for me. So Floyd and Big Show, that was entertaining. Triple Threat for the WWE title was good. Taker and Edge was good. Sean and Ric Flair, how can you forget it? But then you got JBL versus Finley, which was longer than Batista versus Umaga. Kane versus Chavo, which was 10 seconds. Pretty sure there was a woman's match in there that got about four minutes of screen time too. Like a lot of dumb shit. WrestleMania 25, Reem of the Crowd. Probably one of the best WrestleManias out there, if you're asking me. Yeah, Taker and Michaels stealing the show and basically ruining the rest of the card. <laughs> Triple H and Orton, which shouldn't have been that bad. Cena versus Edge versus Big Show. Matt versus Jeff Hardy. Tris Jericho versus The Legends. Pretty decent Money in the Bank match in there. Like, WrestleMania 25 was as excellent as they could have made it. Moving on, we got WrestleMania 26. Um, I don't dare call it lackluster, but I'll call it solid. It's overrated. For one, the card starts out with a three-minute tag team match. For two, Randy Orton's match versus Legacy only got like seven minutes when that was one of the most interesting things going on. For three, Jack Swagger won the money in the bank. For four, we had to watch a 70-year-old Bret Hart hobble around a ring for 10 minutes. Like, yeah, Taker Sean 2 was cool, but it ain't gonna dig it out of the trenches that much. WrestleMania 27, asshole. One of the worst I've ever seen. I hate it to this day. I hate that WrestleMania so much. You can say it's saved by Taker versus Triple H. I don't think it is. Even CM Punk and Orton doesn't dig it out of the trenches. I hate it. The main event was Cena and The Miz, which ended 
ended to interference by The Rock. It kicked off with Edge versus Alberto Del Rio. You had Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler fighting. You had like an eight-man tag match to get people involved. It was shit. And that'll bring us to 28. That is cream of the crop, man. I love that WrestleMania. It's very nostalgic for me. Cena and Rock, Triple H, Undertaker, Hell in a Cell, CM Punk versus Jericho. There was just a ton of hype and a lot of real bad blood in the rivalries in this WrestleMania that just made it so exciting. All right, moving on to WrestleMania 29, lackluster, nearly ass. I actually hate that WrestleMania if it wasn't for Undertaker and CM Punk or Cena versus Rock 2, which a lot of people don't even like that match. For instance, the world title match this WrestleMania was Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. Ryback and Mark Henry fought, Chris Jericho fought Fandango, Triple H fought Brock Lesnar in a really slow match. I, I... I think it's ass. Well, not completely ass, but it's really close to it. Now we got WrestleMania 30, if you're asking me, arguably the most overrated WrestleMania out there, uh, lackluster. For one, it was way too predictable. You knew what was gonna happen. For two, if you're like me and you didn't really love Daniel Bryan that much, you didn't want it to happen that much. And for three, Daniel Bryan was like half the card. Yeah, you had Cena and Bray Wyatt and Undertaker and Brock. The rest were scrub matches. Like, it was not that good. WrestleMania 31, solid. Didn't like it as much as most people did, but it was okay. I liked the ladder match. I liked the main event. Cena and Rusev was fine. Taker and Bray Wyatt, well, Taker was way out of his prime by then. Triple H and Sting, again, you're watching two 60-year-old men wrestle around a ring. WrestleMania 32. Ass. Big old bag of ass. If you're asking me, the woman's triple threat is the only thing worth going back and watching here. The main event, you knew Roman was gonna win. He was forced down our throats. Shane versus Taker was spotty. Rest of the match card, it could have been on a Monday Night Raw. Now we got WrestleMania 30. 33, uh, solid. Triple H and Seth was cool. Taker versus Roman sucked. But you also had AJ versus Shane, the cool ladder match. Brock and Goldberg, which was short but amazing. Randy and Bray, it was okay. And that'll bring us to Mania 34. Sorry, but, uh, yep, uh, lackluster. Borderline ass. I don't ever go back and watch this one. Matches were good. It was the booking for me. Cena and Undertaker gets two minutes. AJ beats Shinsuke. Charlotte beat Asuka. Both Royal Rumble winners got the big old middle finger. Sure, we got to see Daniel Bryan in return and Brock beat the piss out of Roman at the end, but it didn't save it for me. It really didn't. You guys can tell there was a brief period of time here where I was quite disappointed with WWE. All right, on to WrestleMania 35. I actually think this was the redemption mania for me. I thought it was very good, but it was very long. This is where they decided basically, hey, we need to go to two nights. But you had Seth and Brock. You had the women's triple threat main eventing it with the botch finish, but still a good match. Triple H and Batista, Demon Finn Balor versus Bobby Lashley. Kofi Mania, who can forget that? Like, it was good, just it was too long. WrestleMania 36, also known as the COVID mania. Ass, I don't even talk about that. I don't even want to talk about that. I will never, ever go back and watch that. It was the worst thing I'd ever seen. Wrestling without fans is like trying to paint without paint. It doesn't work. Now we got WrestleMania 37. Uh, solid to me. Again, I, people glaze the main event a lot more than I do. I don't think it was that good of a triple threat match. It was okay. I think Bianca and Sasha was great. Riddle and Sheamus was amazing. Having Bobby retain over Drew was a very surprising and great outcome, but to me, I just... Again, I, I don't go back and relive this WrestleMania very often, aside from about the four or five matches that I just named. WrestleMania 38, very good. You had Cody coming back, Stone Cold coming back. Johnny Knoxville put on a hell of a show versus Sami Zayn. Becky and Bianca was outstanding, and I actually think Roman versus Brock would have been good, but it was the injury factor that Roman got hurt and the match had to end early. I think they executed very well with this one. And then we end with WrestleMania 39, which to this day I will still say, that the ending of it destroyed the entire card for me, but that WrestleMania up until the end, honestly, I thought was fucking amazing. Charlotte and Rhea, you had the Intercontinental title triple threat. Seth versus Logan, tag team championship match, Ray versus Dom, Edge versus the Demon in the cell, even though the wrong person won, and then the main event, which was a great match until the final five seconds. Like that, they ate it up last year. The last two WrestleManias, in my opinion, have been great, and I have high hopes for WrestleMania 40. And that's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen, for this video and my complete ranking of every WrestleMania. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel free to let me know where you agree or disagree. I always like reading you guys' wrestling takes. Anyway, with everything I just said, I'm gonna get this uploaded so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and as always, I will see you in the next video.